Hello, this is the System Slayer, and welcome to episode 4 of the GitLab CI series. This episode builds on the work completed in episode 3 of this series. I recommend checking out episode 3 in order to fully understand what will be covered here. In this episode, we will be enhancing our continuous integration configuration to include a more complex pipeline for our master branch. Before we get started, I want to cover a few key functions of GitLab that will be used later in this episode. First, let's ensure that the container registry is enabled for our project. To do this, we can go to the general settings of our project and then expand the visibility, project features, and permissions dropdown. Here we need to make sure that the container registry is turned on. Enabling the container registry will allow us to store the Docker images from our pipeline in GitLab. Let's quickly take a look at the container registry page by clicking on the container registry link that is under packages and registries. This is the page that will hold our Docker images created within the pipeline discussed in this episode. As you can see, we must log into the registry to push our images, and we can do this with a personal access token. I will show you how to generate an access token in a second. But one quick thing I want to note here is the default Docker image name that will be used. The default Docker image name consists of your username slash project name. Therefore, the default image name for this project will be System Slayer Official slash GitLab CI series. This default name is conveniently stored in an environment variable named CI Registry Image that GitLab makes available to our pipeline jobs. We will see more on this later in this episode. Next, let's learn how to create an access token. If we go to our account settings and then click on access tokens, we find a page where we can generate an access token. I have created an access token ahead of time, but you can generate one for yourself using this form. GitLab provides granular control over access permissions associated with the token generated, but you can choose API access for the purposes of this episode. Once you have generated the access token, copy it and keep it in a safe place. We will get to the place where we actually use the access token soon. It would be nice if our pipeline jobs could reference our access token through an environment variable, right? Luckily, GitLab has a feature that allows us to define environment variables that can be used by our jobs. If we go to Settings, CI, CD, and then expand the Variables section, we find a place where we can define our own environment variables. As you can see, I already have a few variables defined. The CI reg token variable holds my access token, and the CI reg username variable simply holds my username. We will go over the compose tag variable in a second, but first let's go over how you can create a variable for your own access token. To create a variable for the access token you generated earlier, you can click the Add Variable button. The key portion denotes the name of the variable that will be available to our jobs. You can paste your access token in the value text field. The type should be left as variable, but just for information purposes, note that you can define a file to be available to your jobs. For the purposes of this video, the protected flag can be turned off. The concept of protected branches is out of the scope of this episode. Lastly, you should enable the mask variable flag. Since the access token is sensitive information, you wouldn't want it being exposed in the logs of the pipeline jobs. With this option enabled, GitLab will automatically mask this variable in the job logs. Note that the value needs to meet certain requirements in order to be masked. I have included a link to these requirements in the description below. Don't worry, the generated access token does meet the masking requirements. Okay, now let's go over the compose tag variable. This variable will be used by Docker Compose not only to name the image it will build in our pipeline, but also to tag it. As you can see, this variable is composed of other environment variables. Everything to the left of the colon makes up the image name. As you can see, we are using the CI registry image variable that we talked about earlier to denote the image name. Everything to the right of the colon denotes the image tag. A Docker image can have many different tags. This allows you to have multiple versions of an image. Let's go over the components that make up our tag. CI commit ref slug is simply a URL friendly version of the name of the code branch that triggered the pipeline. URL friendly simply means that GitLab would automatically replace any characters in the branch name that cannot be used in a URL. CI commit short SHA evaluates to a few characters of the SHA sum of the commit. All you have to know for the purposes of this episode is that this variable will evaluate to a character string that is different for each commit you make. Lastly, notice we can also put plain text as an appendage to the environment variables. In this case, we are appending dash test to denote that this tag is meant for testing purposes. In the end, the compose tag variable would evaluate to something like what you are now seeing on the screen. Now that we know that the compose tag variable will contain branch and commit information and that it will be different for each pipeline, let's quickly revisit the docker compose file to tie things together. In the previous episode, we touched briefly on the image definition of our docker compose file. 
As you can see, the compose tag variable is being used here. This means that the value of that variable will be used to name and tag the image that Docker Compose will build for us. One important thing to note is that Docker Compose doesn't always build an image for us. By default, it only builds an image if an image with the specified name and tag isn't already available locally. If an image with the specified name and tag already exists locally, Docker Compose will simply use that image to create services associated with it. But we'll take advantage of this functionality later. Okay, now we are ready to cover the enhancements made to the GitLab CI YAML file. The first thing to notice is that our file now lists all three stages, build, test, and deploy. We also have build, test, and deploy job definitions for our master branch. Let's go over the details of these jobs. Afterwards, I will explain the reasoning behind this configuration. As a quick note, we have already explained the image and services portion of a job definition in the previous episode, so we will not go over that again here. First, let's take a look at our build job for our master branch, which is named Docker Build Master. Notice how we have defined this as a job for the build stage. If you recall, when we visited the container registry page, we saw that we must sign into the registry before working with it. This is what is taking place in our before script section. Notice how we are using our own environment variables to enter a username and password. The registry variable is another built-in variable and it defaults to the GitLab container registry. As this job is a build job, naturally our main script definition takes care of building our Docker image. This build command will create our image and then name it and tag it using the value of the compose tag variable. Once that is complete, we push the image to our registry using the docker push command. The docker push command says, hey docker, we should have a local image with the name and tag that is equal to the value of the compose tag environment variable. Please take this image and push it to the registry we are currently signed into. Finally, we log out of our registry in the after script portion of our job. A very important thing to note here is the only definition. With this definition in place, we are stating that this job should execute only for the master branch. This means that only commits pushed to the master branch on gitlab.com will trigger this job. Next, let's take a look at our master branch test job. In our before script section, notice we are pulling the image that was created in the build stage after logging in. This makes sure that an image that is named and tagged with the value of the compose tag variable is available locally. This means that Docker Compose will use the available image instead of creating a new one. Our main script definition takes care of running the project's test suite. This script definition will be the main thing that determines whether this stage job passes or fails. Lastly, let's take a look at our master branch deploy job, which is named Docker Deploy Master. The first thing to notice is the variable section. Through this section, we can define some environment variables that will be available specifically for this job. Here we define a master tag variable. The value of this variable is just another tag for our Docker image, but this tag will be used to denote that this version of the image is the master version. We could have created this variable in gitlab.com, but we define it here for demonstration purposes. Like in our test job, the before script section of our deploy job pulls the image created during the build stage of our pipeline. The main script definition uses the docker tag command to take the image built in the deploy stage of the pipeline and retag it as the master version. The version that is now tagged as the master version is then sent to our registry. This effectively promotes the image created in the build stage to be the new master image. The next line of our script simulates the actual deployment of our new project version. You can replace this echo command with your preferred method of deploying your new project version. One last important detail is the when definition. As you can see, we have set when to manual. This effectively configures this deploy job to run in continuous delivery mode, meaning that the deploy stage will have to be manually triggered. If you remember from episode 1, continuous delivery is essentially deployment at the push of a button. If we want our job to run in continuous deployment mode, meaning automatic deployments, we would simply remove the when definition. However, you should be aware that you would have to implement a strategy to deal with possible concurrency issues that arise from multiple pipelines running at the same time. You would have to deal with the fact that you could have two deploy stages running at the same time. With the continuous delivery configuration, we control when deployments are triggered, which eliminates deployment concurrency issues. Let's now quickly explain the reasoning behind the configuration of our three-stage pipeline. You may be wondering why we push our image to a remote location in the build stage and then download the image in both the test and deploy stages. You may be wondering why we don't just build the image in the build stage and then reuse it in the test and deploy stages. This seems like it would save some upload and download time, right? If you are wondering this, then you must be thinking that our build, test, and deploy jobs will always be executed on the same machine. We can have many runners associated with one project. This means that we can have multiple machines available to run pipeline jobs for our project. It could be the case that our jobs get executed on different machines. 
For this reason, we ensure to keep our image in one central place, the container registry, which can then be accessed by multiple machines. Okay, we now understand our three-stage pipeline for our master branch, let's see it in action. Let's make a quick change to the code in our master branch. You would usually use pull requests to make changes to the master branch and not actually change the master branch directly, but for the purposes of this video, we will quickly edit the master branch. We'll simply make a readme change and then push the new commit. If we go to the pipelines page in gitlab.com, we see that we have a new pipeline with three stages that is now running. We can click on each of the stages to list the jobs associated with a particular stage. We can then click on a job to see it running in real time. Once the build stage is finished, the test stage will execute. Again, we can follow the same steps to see our test job running in real time. Once the test stage is finished, we will have the option of triggering our deploy stage, since we have configured things in continuous delivery mode. We'll have a drop down that shows our deploy job when expanded. If we click on the name of our deploy job, we essentially trigger a deployment. Before we do that though, let's visit the container registry. Here we see an image with the default image name. Below the image name, we see that there is one tag available for the image, which should be the image built during the build stage of our pipeline. If we click on the image name, we see a list of tags. Notice how the tag is essentially everything to the right of the colon in our compose tag variable. Let's now go back to the pipelines page and trigger the deploy stage. We can watch the deploy stage running in real time as well. Once the deploy stage is finished, we can go back to our container registry and we can see that we now also have a master image, which is our build stage image that has been promoted. That's it, we now have a three stage pipeline that covers building, testing and deploying our master branch using continuous delivery. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Your feedback is highly appreciated as well, so please leave a comment below. See you next time. Slayer out.